No, I didn't have to watch Impact this week. And I haven't watched it for a while. The last time I watched it, believe it or not, was when AJ sort of made his return to being phenomenal. He sort of blended in the no one personality with the phenomenal personality. That's the last time I saw Impact and recorded Impact. But, when I read the results, the spoilers, for this week's impact, and I read these about a week or two, a couple weeks ago, and you find out find out that AJ is going to lose the title, lose his match to Magnus. And you find out that the friends of AJ were possibly taken out by bad influence or somebody like Team Dixie or whoever. And to me, it's like seriously. Doug, TNA, I think if you watch Schleg Daddy, Jeff Shegel's review on TNA this past week, here's a guy that was, has been willing to give TNA credit for the past few months. Been willing to give them credit for turning, this, turning the page, if you will, and finally getting their act together. Oh yeah, that, that lasted long, didn't it? I mean, pretty much, we all knew. We all knew. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves, folks. We all knew that as soon as Magnus won the championship, at the end, at the end of that championship tournament, with the help of EC3, Rockstar Spud, and Dixie Carter, and basically aligned himself with them, and maybe even the bros mans, who knows, you pretty much got yourself a freaking new faction. Yeah, you got yourself a freaking new faction called Team Dixie or Dixie Land or whatever you want to freaking call it. You pretty much got a new faction, and that was more established. And that, if that wasn't established there, and if that wasn't established two, three weeks ago, it was more than established. Last Thursday. It was more than established last Thursday. You know why? Because if that pretty much didn't tell you, TNA pretty much didn't tell you, oh, by the way, this is our new heel faction, our, he our new heel major, fa our new major heel faction, our new NWO, our new Immortal. If this wasn't a way of telling you that what was going to happen, that this is your new aces and eights, then I don't know. And TNA, TNA wonders. They freaking wonder why instead of averaging 2 point million or 2.5 million viewers, that they still, on a constant basis, and I can, and, it, and for the life of me, I cannot understand this, why Viacom even cares as for this kind of a rating and why they're okay with it. But instead of generating a 2 point a 2 million or 2.5 million viewership on Thursday nights. Now that they don't have to worry about Thursday night football, that they still get a 1. Point million or 1.5 million viewership. You know, and they wonder why also, out of all places, out of all places, and this is all due to their stupidity, but out of all places, they can't even fill up a thousand seat middle school gym, not a high school gym. No offense, Jeff. No offense. Not a high school gym, but a thousand seat middle school gym in Bryce in Boston, Tennessee. In Bryce, Tennessee. They can't even fit fill up a thousand seat gym. And all they get is about three to seven hundred people. Now seven hundred, okay, I'll accept that. 
I'll accept that. Maybe that's decent. But other people are saying, not even that, half, not even half of that. Well, depending on what side is true, 700 is more acceptable. I'll give it that because at least it shows, yeah, it's Friday night. People would rather be out partying and going and to dance clubs and all that instead of sitting in a freaking middle school gym. I get that. The further away you get from schooling, <laughs> if you're a student, for the weekend, the better. But still, but still, I, for the life of me, still, you can't even get a thousand people into that gym. And you only get seven, three hundred to maybe seven hundred people. Now let's say, let's say for, for the sake of argument, that the people that have said there was 300 people, if not 400 people, less than five, maybe three to 500 people. That is pathetic. That is pathetic. I mean, let me give you an example. My high school gym, my middle school gyms, where I used to go to school at, no doubt could fit a capacity of almost a thousand people. They could fit a capacity. And that's in Oskaloosa, Kansas, a small town, which some people, when you tell them about it, it's like, what the heck is Oskaloosa, Kansas? You know? That, at least, could, that, those places, those two places, those two gyms could fit about a thousand people. And when I, and, and here's, here's what's crazy about this. Here's what's crazy. Even the football stadium, small as it is, could fit a thousand people. And you know what? They have fit a thousand people more often on the days and nights that they've had football games on Friday nights, on the nights that they the nights and days they had girls and girls and boys basketballs games, and those on weekday nights, they have filled them up more than what has been described for a TNA has right now. I mean, are you seriously freaking kidding? I mean, again, for the sake of argument, let's say the three to five hundred attendance is correct, is the more correct attendance for a middle school gym. That shows you how pathetic TNA is. It's almost like it's almost like you got a question question the fact if Dixie Carter and whoever's backstage associated with her backstage, you got to ask yourself and wonder if Dixie Carter is purposely trying to run this company into the ground. I mean, I like Dixie Carter. I'm a fan of hers. I respect the fact that she is the first women, she is the first female owner of a company. I, I respect her for that. I respect her for that. But I cannot respect the fact that if she is purposely trying to run this company into the ground, maybe because she doesn't have a passion for it anymore. Or maybe she just doesn't like wrestling entirely anymore. Well, guess what, Dixie? Guess what? If you don't like the business anymore, if you don't have a passion for it anymore, hand it over to someone that does and get out. TNA is supposed, supposed to turn the crap around for this year. Well, they sure as heck ain't off to a good start, are they? They aren't. I mean, what are you trying to do now with, with Bubba Ray, Bully Ray? What are you trying to do with him? You trying to have him go back to his old ECW hardcore roots? Huh? Is that what you're trying to do? Well, but by how? What? By having him spray lighter fluid all over Joseph Park and and Anderson, threatening to set them on fire? Is that what you're doing? You're thinking, oh, well, if we have one of our guys go back to his old hardcore roots. That'll get people's attention because they want hardcore. Yeah, a lot of wrestling fans want hardcore. They want the WWE to go back to that hardcore style. 
They want hardcore. They do. But you can't just say, oh, well, we're going to spice up this feud, which we people have seen time and time and time and time again. We're going to spice it up by having lino fluid added in and the threat of setting somebody on fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that. Now, that's going to work, ladies and gentlemen. The fact of the matter is this, TNA. You've got 12 months, including this month, the whole year, this whole year to get your act together. The whole year. You're going overseas to the UK in the next few weeks to do some tapings, if you will. You need to get your act together while you're over there. Make sure you make plenty of money to pay off whatever debt that you have. And get yourselves financially back to even or even break even, you need to start doing that. Because if not, before this year's out, Bound for Glory will end up being your last pay-per-view ever if you make it that far. And I'm look, I'll give you credit. I'll give you know I'll give you some credit. I'm probably sure you're gonna make it to Bound for Glory, but if you don't get your act together before then, Bound for Glory is gonna be your last pay-per-view ever, and you're gonna start out 2015 with the announcement that you have been, that you have sold your damn company either to Gabe Kapolsky and Sinclair Broadcasting and Ring of Honor, or you're going to announce the sale to the WWE, and that's your library, your library is going to be WWE property. That's what's going to happen, and a lot of your superstars, your knockouts, are all either going to have to go to WWE end up in NXT for a while, get their names changed up, get their gimmicks changed up, or they're going to have to go back to the indies, or they're going to go to Family Wrestling Entertainment, or they're going to go to Ring of Honor, or they're going to go with Jeff Jarrett and his new company. Or heck, they may even risk health and injury and go to CZW for all they know, or even go to Shimmer. All because you guys would, all because you guys wouldn't, all because you guys this year wouldn't have gotten your act together. You better damn well get your act together, because 2014 right now is not starting out as a good year for you. I mean, you want to overbook a freaking title unification match, champion versus champion. You want to take somebody like Magnus, who was getting over as a baby face. He was getting majorly over, believe it or not, as a baby piece. You want to turn him heel, and now you want to make it even more so by making him, as Slate Daddy put it, a chicken shit heel. Excuse my language. But you want to make him as a chicken shit heel, excuse my language again, but you want to make him that. You're basically taking somebody that was getting over with the fans as a baby face, and you're saying, oh, well, screw that. You know, we're going to make him a heel. And we're going to make him the face and... The, the face of the new Aces and Eights faction known as Team Dixie. You know what Team Dixie is? It's nothing more than a damn rip-off of the corporation authority angle. And guess what? The authority angle, even though it's right now is only three to maybe five people involved, the authority angle is more effective in WWE than the freaking Team Dixie angle. Because nobody's taking this group seriously. I mean, look who you, Okay, Magnus is your champion. whoop de doo Look who you have associated with him. Rockstar Spud. Put him in the ring with Abyss. Splat. The Bros Man. Put them up against the dominant tag team that comes in. Splat. EC3. Put him up against somebody that's hyped up. That's basically like this year's version of Sting or whatever. This generation's answer to Sting or whatever, or even in a clean one-on-one -on -one match with a returning Jeff Hardy or even a returning AJ. Splat! Get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, folks? What I'm saying is you guys need to get your acts together. 
the IWC and the YWC, the Off the Rope Show Central, Jeff Shego, the Schleck Daddy, the Lex Man, you know, even myself, we all look at the potential you have to be great. The potential you have to be that, that answer, that alternative. And yet you're, shitting your, yet you're shooting yourselves in the foot and you're basically you're going, causing yourselves to go down the crapper. I mean, I mean, if it's not one thing with this company, it's another. It's like you can, and you know what the main problem is, folks? You know what the main problem is? It's like this company cannot go a single year or so without a freaking faction. It's like once you get one, rid of one faction, here comes another. Once you get rid of that faction, here comes another, and another, and another. It's like you guys can't even end it. You know, Jeff did point out some things, okay, that were good, that you're doing good. But you really need to let that goodness, that greatness that you're working on these several, that you have going with these several items, you need to let that spread throughout all your company. You need to be, let that be influenced on all of your company, on all storylines or whatever you have going. I mean, two things, two things. Out of any other storyline or something going on you got going in that company are probably the best things you got going. One, James Storm, Storm Gunner. You don't know who to cheer for. You won't know probably until Genesis who to cheer for, whose side's gonna be, whose side you should be on. And then the number one thing, AJ Styles. You have people constantly asking and wondering. Is he gone from TNA? Is he with TNA? Is TNA working with all these companies to make it seem like he's gone? That's good. But guess what? You know, when you even have him doing an RF video shoot, you know, you had him doing an RF video shoot and all that, you know, it, may, it still makes you wonder, is, is this all part of a plan? Is he really gone? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's all good. That's good. That's great. But, but, you got to let that greatness of both of these situations, both of these storylines, if you will, you need to let that influence spread throughout all your company. You need to make everything that you touch be similar to that or have a similar feel. You want to put Magnus over as your top heel in the company, guess what? Let the influence of what you got going of what you got going storyline-wise with Gunner and Storm and possibly AJ, allow that to be spread over to, to Magnus and let him and his next feud or whatever have that kind of feel. The same with the Knockouts division. Bring in more Knockouts if you have to and give them a creating and, de and develop some kind of storyline there. You got something going with Madison, Rain, and Gale, whether people like it or not. So start working on something there. I mean, you have something potentially going with Velvet in her situation with Chris Saban. You know, you have the potential. Use it! But more importantly than anything, you have the potential. You need to use it. But here's one more thing. If this, and I pray to God, and along with all of the IWC and YWC, pray to God this is not going to happen. But if this ends up being financially a year that's worse for you than 2013, then you could pretty much, like I said earlier, kiss your butts goodbye after Bound for Glory, should you make it that far, and I believe you will. But you could pretty much kiss your butts goodbye after that. Because one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to have to sell your company off to one of the two that I mentioned, which is going to cause all your talent to scatter about to all these different possibilities, whether it's RH, FWE, CZW, all the independents, Shimmer, WWE, 
these NXT developmental whatever, it's going to cause them to scatter about, or two, Viacom is going to end up dropping your butts, dropping your company, because even though, for the life of me, like I said earlier, you guys generate a one, point, one million or one point two, five million viewers, which obviously they're okay with, but whether or not Viacom gets another deal for another wrestling program, whether it's WWE related or Ring of Honor related, or even Family Wrestling Entertainment related, you know, depending on whether they get a new one or not, if they decide to drop you, do not be surprised because sooner or later, somebody's going to say, you know what, we can only, we can only sustain, we can only let impact, TNA impact pass with a 1.5 million viewership, you know, every so often. We can't do that anymore. They got to reach that two point. Sooner or later, somebody at Viacom is going to get sick and tired of that. Somebody at Spike TV is going to get sick and tired of that. And they're either going to give you the option of getting that viewership up, or they're going to drop you guys in favor of one of those other companies that I mentioned. And then, then what are you guys going to do? Go look for another home? Go back to your weekly pay-per-views? Huh? If you don't get your acts together before this year is out, I guarantee you, I guarantee you by the time 2015 comes around, someone figuratively, figuratively, is going to start sketching up or start carving out a tombstone for you in the wrestling promotion graveyard. It's going to start digging a hole for you six feet under in that wrestling graveyard, wrestling promotion graveyard, and they're going to take your logo, they're going to take everything about TNA that was made it great and made it bad, they're going to place it all in that casket, shut it, lower it six feet under, bury it, put the tombstone up, and says, here lies TNA from 2002 to 2015, uh, 2002 to 2015, reason for demise, went out of business because of bad business decisions. Folded, or you could say, reason for, died, you know, and they could say, reason for demise, folded because of bad business decisions. That's what's going to happen, folks. That's what's going to happen. So TNA, as one wrestling fan, and I don't represent them all, but I know a lot of other wrestling fans that are getting sick and tired of your BS to say the same thing. You want us to like you? You want us to view you? You want us to get behind you? Get your act together. Enough with the faction. Stop depending on having a faction every, single, every freaking single year. It doesn't help. It doesn't get you over. It doesn't get people talking. You're not... WCW and your factions never will be the NWO. Get it through your freaking skulls. You're not WWE. This new Team Dixie is not the damn authority. Get it through your freaking skull. Get your act together. Be original. Be original and start promoting your crap so that people and even the freaking thousand seat middle school gym can come out and support you. And you know what's even more crazy about this, folks? Six years ago, in an armory that doesn't have no stands or whatsoever, have no bleachers, in an army, in an armory, if you will, the Central States Wrestling, when AJ Styles made a first appearance there, guess what? He oversold out. An overselling, an oversold out army was filled to the brim. Three thousand people in Lawrence, Kansas to see AJ Styles and some people like me fortunate enough to meet with him in a Q&A in a Q&A and talk with him. Yeah, I talked with AJ Styles. The phenomenal one. And if an independent NWA related company like Central States Wrestling could fill up 3,000 could fill up a non-bleacher seated armory with 3,000 people to see AJ Styles. What does that tell you, TNA? It tells you you should sign the guy. 
You should! Because he is the face of your company. People associate him with your company. And if they start seeing him with Ring of Honor more often than not, if they start seeing him with CZW or not, if they start seeing him with Bradley Wrestling Entertainment or not, more often than not, whether this is all part of the storyline work or not, they're going to start turning against you and turning towards those companies. So if I'm you, I get your act together. Because right now, 2014 is not starting out as good. It's not starting out good for you. It's not. And I can only imagine Sting's reaction, Kurt Angle's reaction to having to perform in front of 300, possibly 300 or 400 people, if that's the attendance record for this past Friday in that middle school. I can only imagine. So TNA. Get your act together, or by the time we get to 2015, you will be bare, you will, by the time we get to 2015, you don't get your act together this year. There's going to be a plot set and ready for you to be laid to rest. And Dixie, people are going to start pointing the finger at you if you don't get your act together for this company. And be original. Comment down below, anybody, if you agree with me. God bless. Take care.